Shannon from Gunbrook Farm and today I want to talk about how to become more self-sufficient with your health care and what we do here. Now as many of you know we are on the um, path to becoming more self-sufficient. Now when people think about self-sufficiency they generally think about providing their own food, uh, maybe having their own home business, providing their own income, maybe being off-grid, providing their own power, maybe even making your own uh, body care and home products. But what is often overlooked is providing your own health care. Now this is particularly important uh, today because healthcare is a hot topic in the news right now where it is extremely unaffordable to the majority of people. And on top of that, in more recent news, uh, a lot of um, insurers are dropping the individual insurance programs in a lot of states. Uh, that means that people like ourselves who are self-employed are finding it more and more difficult to get insurance and, uh, and more and more expensive to, pro to get our own insurance at, if we can get it at all. So we have a very holistic approach when it comes to medicine. And the number one thing that we turn to for healthcare is naturopathy. That means building up our immune systems to prevent getting sick in the first place. Um, but what happens when that falls through? What happens when you do get the cold or the flu or you start getting fevers or even rashes or bug bites um, or even uh, some sort of mental illness such as anxiety or depression? What do we turn to then? Well, we turn to something called homeopathy. Now I'm going to explain to you what homeopathy is, how to use it, uh, and the one remedy that I always carry on my person. But before I do that, I need to give the preface disclaimer in that I am not a doctor, naturopath, or a homeopath. I cannot advise anybody on any kind of medicines. Um, and if you choose to go down this path, this is something that you're going to have to research and potentially talk with your doctor about. So what is it? Homeopathy is a century-old alternative medicine that is basically premised off of Hippocrates' philosophy of healing using contraries and similars. So with traditional medicine, traditional medicine uses contraries. Uh, so for example, say that you have constipation. With, with traditional Western medicine, if you have constipation, they're going to give you a laxative. Now constipation is actually a symptom of a disease. So when you are given that laxative, the laxative is actually treating the symptom. It's not actually treating the disease, which more than likely has to do with poor diet. So in essence, what you're doing with, with that particular situation is you are masking the actual cause of the symptom, which is constipation. So another example is if you have a fever that's caused by a virus. Um, most would take Tylenol to reduce that fever, but the fever is actually the body's defense against viruses. So by reducing that fever, uh, in essence, you're actually extending your illness and temporarily tricking your body into thinking that you're feeling better. So homeopathy is based on the principle of similars or like cures like, in that you would take a remedy that actually causes symptoms that are similar to your symptoms. So in the case of a fever, taking a homeopathic remedy, it may actually raise your fever in order to burn off that virus faster. Now, homeopathy is also different than traditional medicine in that it doesn't generalize symptoms. So for example, with a headache, um, traditional medicine would lump all headaches into one and tell you to go take Advil and lay down. But with homeopathy, they're going to look at different symptoms that you may have that you might not pay attention to on a regular basis. So for example, where does your head hurt? Does it hurt in the back? Does it hurt in the forehead? Does it hurt in the temples? Is it a pounding headache? Is it a throbbing headache? Um, does heat make it feel better? Does cold make it feel worse? And so on and so forth. And it's all those answers combined that help define what exact remedy you should be taking uh, for your specific symptoms. So what is a remedy and how does it work? Well, remedies can be made up of any number of substances, including uh, plants, animals, and even poisons. Now, before you freak out and say, oh my God, it's a poison, I would never do that. I'd rather stick with traditional medicine. Just keep in mind that uh, in um, recent studies, people are experimenting with using uh, snake venom and scorpion ver venom to help treat certain types of cancers. So what do they do with these substances? Well, they are typically, uh, the initial substance is uh, blended with some sort of alcohol, and then it's diluted and shaken vigorously many, many times until the desired potency is reached. Uh, and then that remedy is typically put into some sort of uh, form that can be administered. And this can be a lactose tablet or a wafer or a pellet uh, or a syrup or a lotion or any number of things. All right, so maybe you're interested and you wanna know how do you diagnose remedies? Like how do you figure out which remedy is right for you? Because there are literally hundreds of thousands of them. Well, in, in professional homeopathy, they use a reference book that's called a repertory, uh, which is basically a list of symptoms. Uh, and then they will cross-reference that with a, another 
book called The Material Medica, which is a symptom picture of each remedy. But for the home user, some of these books can be quite complicated to understand, and so there are people that have created these smaller versions that are much easier to understand. They do still contain a, a repertory and a materia medica, and I'm going to show you um, how to use that. So let's say, for example, that you have a headache. You would go back to the repertory, and you would look under the section on headaches. Now you can see that under headache there are uh, quite a few remedies that would apply to headaches. But as I said, homeopathy looks at very, very specific symptoms. So when you start to go down through the list, you'll see that um, there are different types of headaches that you could potentially have. So let's just say that you have a hammering headache. Uh, well, when you look under hammering headaches, you can see that there are several different remedies under there. So let's narrow it down further. Let's say that your headache starts and stops suddenly. Well, now you go under start and stop suddenly and you see belladonna. Uh, that potentially could be your remedy. All right, so in order to double check, you would go up to the Materia Medica and you would read through here and see if your symptoms fit uh, the actual picture profile of Belladonna. And if you go under headache, you can see where pain might be in the back of the eyes, um, in the temples bursting, hammering. It's better if you're resting or in a darkened room. It's worse if you're bending down uh, or if you're exposed to cold or heat. And causes might be cold air. So maybe you just came in from a wintry day, came in and had this um, pounding headache. So then you would know that belladonna would be potentially the right remedy for you. And in that case, you would take the remedy. Now there are also online uh, materia medicas and repertories that you can find. And I'm gonna list uh, one or two down below in the description, but generally these are kind of complicated for the person that's just getting into homeopathy. Um, but I'll list them just so you guys have them for reference. All right, so where do you get remedies? Well, if you've ever been to a health food store or a pharmacy or even a grocery store, chances are you've seen homeopathic remedies and just didn't know what it was. Uh, in health food stores, you might see this big blue boron display that has these individual remedies on it. Uh, typically around there are uh, additional um, multiple remedies that are in creams and lotions and stuff. Uh, and then when you get into the grocery store and the pharmacy, uh, they typically have the blends such as these in there uh, in the pharmacy section. So homeopathic remedies will come in either a single remedy or a blend. Uh, this is a single remedy here, and this is the preferred way of diagnosing uh, for homeopathy, in particular for those who are traditional homeopathists. Um, and then this, something like this, here is a homeopathic blend. So what's the difference? This is more of a shotgun approach. So if you are unsure of, uh, of a particular remedy and which one's gonna fit you, then you can get something like this, which has actually five different remedies in it. And, and you're hoping that one of those works. Whereas if you take a single remedy, uh, this is very, very specific. It's a lot harder to diagnose, but it's very specific to your specific symptoms and it's the preferred way of doing it. So to give you an analogy in modern medicine, taking a single remedy would be like, say, taking penicillin to treat a specific bacteria because you know which bacteria you're treating. Whereas uh, taking a uh, blend such as this would be like taking amoxicillin and penicillin and uh, I don't know, some other antibiotic in the hopes that uh, it would treat whatever symptoms that you're having or whatever bacteria because you don't know what that bacteria is. So this is actually easier to take for those who are new to homeopathy, but this one is actually the preferred way of taking it if you can diagnose with a single remedy. Now, if you go up to one of the boron displays, they typically have a pull down chart of different symptoms. And if you find yourself in one of these stores and you don't have a Materia Medica or repertory on you and you need something quick, you can use these pull down charts to very quickly find a remedy. Um, it's not 100% accurate, but it is, it is another way of helping to diagnose which remedy is right for you. All right, so how do you know what the dosage is and how much to take? Well, on every single remedy, you're going to see a number. And this number is the number of times that the remedy was diluted. So if you see a 1X on here, it was diluted one time, if you see a 30X on here, it was diluted, diluted 30 times. Now, sometimes you'll see a different letter, such as a C. Um, this is just a different dilution scale or a different way of diluting. And if you get more into homeopathy, you can research that a little bit further, but the principle's still the same, which is the lower the number, the lower the potency. The higher the number, 
the higher the potency. Now lower numbers are more for acute symptoms, so quick acting, short term. Higher potencies are more for um, chronic illnesses, so they're more slow release long term. So most remedies that you see are going to have a dilution of 1, 6, or 30. Um, remedies, remedies are generally safe if you take them responsibly, um, but just know that remedies that are under 30 C can potentially um, interfere with conventional medicines that you're taking. Now, high potency remedies such as 200 C are generally more for chronic illnesses such as chronic pain uh, or uh, mental illnesses such as depression or anxiety. All right, so how do you take a remedy? Well, remedies should be taken at the onset of symptoms. You shouldn't wait to take a remedy. Something uh, such as a cream can be applied, but it should be applied by the person that, uh, by the patient themselves. Uh, the syrups will have a dosage on the back of them, and it'll typically tell you when to take it. Some are once every two hours, some are once every six hours. Uh, and then you get into the individual remedies, which are these little tablets. And the way you take this is, is you turn it. You'll see one pellet will fall down. You can take one or two or three pellets. Uh, and then you just let those dissolve under your tongue. And this is the preferred way of taking uh, homeopathic remedies. Now, as far as dosage, it doesn't matter if you take one pill or if you take this whole bottle at the same time. That is considered one dose. As long as you're taking it in one dosage, uh, whether you're taking one pill or you're taking 50 pills, all at that one time, it's considered one dose. Now, if you take one pill and then 15 minutes later, you take another pill, that's considered two doses. So that's the difference with homeopathy. It's little intricacies like that that you need to pay attention to if you're getting into homeopathy. Now, really the dosage depends on the acuteness and severity of your symptoms. But generally though, you're gonna take a remedy at the onset of set of symptoms and then every 15 minutes until you feel relief. However, if you've taken three doses and you don't feel any relief, then chances are you have the wrong remedy. Now, one of three things is going to happen when you take a remedy. Either you're going to feel better, you're going to feel worse, or nothing's going to happen at all. If you feel better, then you have the right dose and you have the right remedy. If you feel worse, then you have the right remedy, but the dose is too high. You need to go down on your dose. Now, if you don't feel anything at all, if there's no change in your symptoms, then you have the wrong remedy and you need to go back to your uh, repertory and your Materia Medica and see if there's something else that fits you a little bit better. Now, remedies should be taken on an as-needed basis, so you don't uh, take them as a preventative and you don't continue to take them if your symptoms stop. As soon as your symptoms stop, you don't take the remedy anymore. All right, so let's do a little Q&A on uh, some of the most commonly asked questions with homeopathy. And the first one is, isn't this the same as herbals? Uh, no, homeopathy is actually not the same as herbals because it's a completely different set of principles and uh, herbals use just plants and homeopathy uses a variety of substances. All right, so isn't it the same as vaccinations? Well, in essence, it's kind of similar in theory uh, in both vaccinations and homeopathy give you a small dose that help uh, the body provide some sort of immune reaction to um, the substance. The difference is, is that homeopathy is administered in a very diluted and safe dose, whereas a vaccine is going to be injected directly into your bloodstream. Here's one that I hear all the time with homeopathy. Isn't homeopathy nothing more than a placebo? Well, placebo infers suggestibility, and that means that you have to be of conscious mind to know what you're taking to um, mentally affect your body that way. Uh, however, homeopathy has been proven to work on both animals and babies, which are not uh, susceptible to placebos. Homeopathy is a pseudoscience. Wikipedia says so. I actually had somebody leave that comment on one of my holistic uh, approach videos. Guys, anybody can write a Wikipedia uh, article or change it if they want to. Well, it's true that homeopathy isn't fully understood by modern science. It has been proven century over century that this actually works and there have been numerous testing and trials to prove its effectiveness. I wouldn't be using it for 13 years if it didn't work. So is homeopathy safe? Uh, maybe some of you guys saw the news six months ago or so where Highlands pacifiers, which were for teething pain, were being recalled due to babies having seizures. And these pacifiers had the remedy belladonna. And uh, what was big in the news is that belladonna is a poison and these parents were poisoning their children. 
in essence, causing the babies to seizure. Uh, there is nothing that makes me more angry than seeing an article like that. Just because something is natural does not mean you can take as much of it as you want. With any substance at all, whether it's natural or chemically derived, if it causes a reaction in the body, then you should be very, very careful in how you take it. These parents were likely given the pacifier to their babies multiple times, taking it in and out of their mouth. And every single time that baby put that pacifier in its mouth, it was getting dosed with belladonna. Like I said before, every single time that you take a remedy, you are in essence dosing yourself. So with these babies, they were being overdosed with medicine. Now Highland's pacifiers are on the same shelf as Tylenol, and these parents wouldn't think of giving their Tylenol every 30 minutes to their baby or every 15 minutes continually giving Tylenol. What happens in that case? You're gonna have liver failure. So you have to be responsible when it comes to homeopathic remedies and dosing, whether it be something that's all natural or not. So just keep that in mind when it comes to taking homeopathy. All right, so why am I saying this is a self-sustainable solution for those looking to become more self-reliant? Well, these remedies, once purchased, are good for basically forever as long as you keep them uh, under the right conditions. And the right conditions mean keeping them dry and keeping them away from any kind of uh, microwave or electronic device. Now, to some people are gonna ask why. Well, just like pregnant women shouldn't stand in front of a microwave because it could negatively affect their baby, um, or just like cell phones have been proven that if you hold the cell phone up to your ear long enough, uh, you could potentially get some sort of cancer from that. Uh, it can affect the remedies in that same sense. So keep these away from any kind of electronic devices or any kind of microwaves or anything like that. And they can last forever. They can also be used for anyone or anything. They can be used for animals, they can be used for babies, they can be used for adults. So this one particular remedy can be used for any of those so you don't have to have uh, different dosages. And finally, all these remedies are made in a clinical setting, but in an emergency, you can actually make your own dilution, your own homeopathic remedies at home. Um, so it is something that in an SHTF situation where you needed to make a remedy, you could potentially make it. Now I have no intention of making my own remedies, but one thing that I would do as soon as I get some cash is I would invest in uh, the professional kits. Um, there are certain homeopathic uh, manufacturers out there that will make professional kits of 100 and buying these kits and keeping them in your house is a long-term solution to treating many, many uh, different illnesses as opposed to going out and buying one remedy at a time. One kit that I do have that I keep um, that I keep in the house is this 200C kit. This kind of gives you an idea of what a professional kit would look like, um, but uh, this is um, just a very mini version of that. This is a mini travel kit and it has this little Materia Medica in it that tells you what each one of the remedies is for. And um, this is kind of what they look like. So this is Nux Vomica, which is for nausea, constipation. And inside you can see there's these little BBs. And like I said, even one of these BBs would dose someone because so you can see where this would last a very, very long time. So getting one of those professional kits is a way of basically uh, having a whole entire homeopathic pharmacy in your house at any one given time, assuming you knew how to look up the appropriate remedy. So if you guys are interested in homeopathy and you want to continue researching yourself, I'm going to share with you guys two books. Um, the number one book that I would recommend you get is this Complete Homeopathy Handbook by Miranda Castro. This is the one book to get if you want to intro to homeopathy. As a backup to that, if you want some more information, uh, I would get this Homeopathic Medicine at Home. It's just another reference book um, that's really good. It goes into a little bit more detail than the other ones. It's a little bit more complicated to understand uh, than this book. So I would go with this one first and this one as a companion book. So what is the number one remedy that I always carry on my person, whether I'm traveling or just staying at home? And that is Arnica Montana. This is made from a plant. And this particular remedy is used to treat both uh, pain and shock. So the one thing that would happen if there's any kind of accidents, if there's any kind of trauma, um, this is my go-to homeopathic remedy for that. I will take, uh, you can see that I have a 200 dose here. This is for something that would be like, if I was in a car accident, I would immediately start dosing with this. Uh, if you're in an earthquake or some sort of traumatic event where you needed to have your wits about you right away, this is what I would take. This would help you get over the shock and it also helps with pain. And I can tell you that uh, 
I've used this multiple times for emergencies. One time uh, I was doing a ropes course and I tore off part of my finger right down to the bone. I took Arnica, 15 minutes later, couldn't feel a thing. Um, and it healed up beautifully. There's absolutely no scar or mark at all from that. So there you go, guys. Uh, that's a very brief overview on homeopathic remedies for self-sustainability. Those looking to become more self-reliant, this might be one option for you if you're looking into it. I just wanted to share that with you. It's what we do here. Hope that's been helpful to you guys. If you have any uh, questions or comments, leave those down below. Again, I am not a professional. I cannot give you advice on any kind of symptoms. All I can do is share with you what we do here. And uh, if that's been helpful to you guys, be sure to like, subscribe. We'll see you in the next video.